Cody Brothers, Cody. Go ahead, Kay, I'll come in. Okay, we're still waiting on Amy to sign off, but your question regarding Heather Lynn is what? Did she have enough points to secure the top 15? Every athlete this week will kind of know basically what, what it is they need to do. Now a lot of that depends on what other players do, but they feel like if they can kind of achieve this goal, this miniature goal of play, kind of reaching this position, that's going to maximize their chances of achieving the goals that they want to get at the end of the day, whether it's LPGA Tour status or whether it's keeping their job for another year to be exempt on the Epsom Tour. So as you say, like, you get here on a Tuesday and we have the pro-am dinner, everyone's out and enjoying it, it's relaxed, it's light-hearted and it's, you know, for the players, it's, you've got to you kind of maintain as much energy as you possibly can. You don't want to expend too much emotional and physical energy. A lot of people tend to just see the final week. You know, they don't think about everything that built up to this week, there's been a whole season that went on. We've had 18 different winners, and we might have a new winner this week as well. So imagine trying to play your best golf, trying to get to the top of the race for the card, but everyone is so good. So while you're trying to win tournaments, you're also trying to get your card. So I can't even like fathom the type of pressure that's on these girls, you know, because they put a lot of pressure on themselves. That's one thing I've learned about golfers is that they are so hard on themselves, they're never happy. So I think going into, especially this week, they know there's so much on the line, but they still just gotta play golf. They gotta play their game. This is the last tournament of the season, so very exciting. New course, four day tournament. Weather is really hot, so I think having a lot of patience would be very important this week. Um, obviously the goal for me right now to be make it into the top 35. It's a little bit far for me now but um, the points are also worth a little bit more this week so just trying to do my best and I would say probably top five will be like the minimum I have to achieve to make that happen. The field is really strong and um, it takes a lot to win a tournament. It's you know it, it, I could only dream of but you know I'm just trying to do my best and see what happens. I won early in the year, so I feel like, not that it's more pressure to like hold your spot, but it kind of is. When you're at the top, you know, you want to keep it, but when you're trying to chase it, like I still, I would love to be number one. I would love to be number one in the points, so that's something I can chase, but it would take a win, and that's exciting. It's something that I can look forward to, but I'm trying to stay present and not think about that and just be focused on the process. Ultimately, I want to be number one in the world and like finishing top 10 on the Epson Tour is a milestone. It's not like the pinnacle for me, so it's just another stepping stone. So it would be great, but I've got more in store. So, yeah. Good morning and welcome to the season ending event of the Epson Tour. After the completion of this event, 15 tour cards will be presented. The event here in Indian Wells, California. On the tee from Chinese Taipei, Heather Lin. We are covering, I think, the most compelling week in, in women's golf. This is where dreams are made of. This is where Players have toiled, they've, uh, they've battled for the last 19 events, and it all comes down to this, top 15, get to the LPGA Tour, top 80 are exempt next year on the Epson Tour. Um, there's, we're trying to get spots for final stage of Q Series. There's so many things, there's so many storylines, and there's a little bit more points this week. There's a lot of fluidity from one moment to the next. We don't really know what's going on. So to be covering it is exciting. Obviously to be playing in it is exciting, nerve inducing. And at the end of it, dreams are gonna be made and there's gonna be heartache. It, it, it's just one of those wonderful days of golf.
running no that means I'm almost recovered. That's like the last the last step. Stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, the first mic up. Can I hear you? Yeah. Film that. Oh my gosh. Got a new Taiwanese word for me. <laughs> I think we're gonna go with suyo. Suyo? Suyo. I think we like that. I love suyo. Oh, actually. Keep doing good. Oh, I'll keep this in mind. Good for now. Good for now. Hello. I'm Heather. Heather, how are you doing? I'm Carl. Nice to meet Good luck you. Today. Hey, Carl. I'm Ben. Ben, how are you doing? Yes. All right. Thank you for your help today. Got any? Let's go. Ciao. Ciao. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Good committed swing. Okay, good speed on it. But, great speed. Committed swing. Suyo! Suyo! A little bit? A little bit left to right? Yay! We have a Good tournament week. in Taiwan next week. Um, it's an LET co section with TLP Jam event, and it starts on Thursday. But with the time difference, if I finish this tournament on Sunday, I arrive in Taiwan Tuesday morning and we have to attend the Pro-Am that same morning. So I'm gonna go straight from the airport to the Pro-Am, play the Pro-Am, hopefully not play Wednesday, and then play the whole weekend to host a four-day event. And if I have to play stage two, fly back Sunday, and we lose time coming here. And um, stage two start on Tuesday, land in Florida Monday morning, and just go tee it up Tuesday. That was my original plan. I feel like if I don't have to play stage two, it will honestly take off a lot of pressure. Financially, um, physically, uh, mentally, I think that will take a lot of pressure and be able to enjoy some time back home. Um, so, yeah. Sweet It was a little downhill, but it was like... Stage two is a four-day event. A lot of things could happen. It's Even you think you're a really good golfer, you know, ranking-wise going into that field, it, it's it's the same for everybody. Like, you, everybody plays the same four rounds. You don't get any advantage if you're, whether if you're 38 or 120 in the ranking. So to be able to not have to play stage two is huge, I think. 50. I think I hit eight, but I just want to make sure I'm right away. Yeah. Good committed swing. I knew yesterday, I didn't check anything. I've been like putting my phone down and staying really grounded in, in what I'm doing. And I checked, I had to. I had to check last night to see like what the projected was. And I was 13, I'm like, eh, it's not really good enough. So I was like, really anxious to come out here today and just like go after it. So I did. You can sense what it means. You can sense the excitement. You can, ex you can sense the, the life-changing experiences, especially on the Epsom Tour. You know, they're, they're just fighting, scrapping, clawing, doing everything they can to have an opportunity to play on the LPGA Tour, the, the biggest, greatest tour in, in women's professional golf. And they're so close. 
and they know their talent levels are, are good enough and close enough to get there. And so it's, you know, it's just that, that journey, that path. And, and that's the great thing about the Epson Tour. There's college superstars coming out straight out of college, having an opportunity to get their LPGA cards. There's former LPGA Tour players who have kind of bounced up and down from tour to tour. And there's, you know, there's other players that have never reached the promised land and you know maybe they're in the late 20s early 30s and it's just been that long winding journey and i think we can get behind that the, like sort of the, almost like the underdog story and and that tale of perseverance and resilience I, I mean there's so many great life lessons in professional sports and especially on the absent tour I'm grateful for another opportunity every week and it hasn't always been sunshine and rainbows this year. Like I, when I won, I actually had no money left. So we were like, we gotta do something. So we did, we won and then a couple weeks ago, um, before I finished fifth in Arkansas, we had no money again. And um, just, I guess it just propels me a little bit to, to fight. So like you have one chance. So you just, you just gotta do it or you don't. And so I think when my back's against the wall, I feel like when I know what I need to do, sometimes I do it. Not all the time, that's just golf, but the majority of the time I do. Yeah, obviously there's a lot on the line with the ranking and you know the scores are pretty close for everybody else. So I think tomorrow, um, you know, everybody's gonna come lights out and try to take a chance to win a tournament. So I'm trying to just play my own game and you know, I feel like I gave myself a lot of opportunity just hoping the putts would drop tomorrow. One more day. One more day. It is so difficult because nothing can really prepare you for this unless you've been through it several times before about, you know, this is a very, very uncomfortable feeling to be one round away from potentially changing your life. And so at this time of the year, it's all cliches. It's one shot at a time, stay in the moment, don't get distracted. But it's so hard to do because, uh, you know, because of what there is on offer. And so I always say this, this time of the year, it's not necessarily the physical skills that gets you over the line, it's the, the mental and emotional. The ability to block out um, distracting thoughts, that's what's going to give them the very best chance to have success this week. Yeah, this is, this is like a critical event for us. I mean, not only is it obviously important for the players to Figure, figure out how they live their dreams and get to the LPJ Tour. But it's just, it's like, it, it sort of symbolizes what sports is all about. You know, you literally take your tests in public, like, to put it all out on the line. You work so hard behind the scenes, and then to be able to realize your dreams and to see the emotion when, when players make it and when players don't make it, it's, it's just what human sort of nature and what sports is all about. Honestly, I was so nervous. My hands were shaking, but you know, I was just like telling myself, you know, just repeat your practice swing. Just, you know, you don't have to think of it. I mean, I really didn't really try to think about making the putt. I, instead, I was like trying to just, you know, repeat your practice swing and stand over the ball and do the same thing. First of all, Lorena Ochoa, absolute legend. You think about Nelly Corda, who won six times in a row on the LPGA Tour, Lilia Vu, who almost gave up the game of golf. They all got their start here on the Epson Tour. You know, like those are the names that you are eventually going to learn. So that's why you might as well just start paying attention now, you know, because you're, you're going to know those names one day, so you might as well get ahead of the curve. Oh my God. Hey, Thank you so let's much. freaking go. So proud of you. Oh my God, I was so nervous that last part. It was like shaking. I could, um, I could hear your breaths. I know. I've never been that nervous in my life.
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. It was, I was so nervous at the back. I was shaking. So what will you finish? I don't know. I'm 16 or 15 after this one. I don't, depends on how everybody else do. I might have a chance, but well, I don't know how everybody else do. We're just going back up for the trophy ceremony. Oh, 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 okay. You want that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've never won before, so I don't know what, what I do from here. Congrats, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I want to take some pictures. Right here? Uh, it's not really hardware, but it's something that can be cash. So let's uh, let's give her a check to <laughs> winner share $43,125. Thank you. Your 2024 Epson Tour champion, Heather Lynn. Beautiful 16 under par. Great score. Thank you. Just working the... Uh, the, the registers to see what the points total is looking like. It's going to be close. Yeah. Right now it's got you projected, but it's not official till they run the final math because it's out three decimal points. Oh, wow. Well, how do you do it to decimal? I thought each tournament is just like a point. Like there's only rounded points. Yeah, but when you have ties, then it starts to separate odd numbers and Multiple oh. odd numbers added up. It, it, they go up. But I thought it was a total point. Or is it? It, it is, but aggregated, it goes out 0. 0.000. Oh. And there's, there's plenty of points that are like 0.257. That's point so two. close. Yes. I, I, I knew I would be like just in or just out. You nervous? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, it was crazy. Should we put the trophy down? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I break it. But it was crazy. Like, Chris was interviewing me like Wednesday mm. about like, potentially this happening, but it's just, you know, there's 108 players who even think of the possibility of this happening. It's just yeah. crazy. That way. Jody Brothers, Jody. Go ahead, Kay, I'll come in. Okay, we're still waiting on Amy to sign off, but your question regarding Heather Lynn is what? Did she have enough points to secure the top 15? That is correct. Copy that. Thank you. That's crazy. Uh, I'm One time. Get Amy on the phone here just to see how long for confirmation. Stand by. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> what a week. Going wow. To the LPGA. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> That's the dream. You know, the dream is going to the LPGA tour. It's the top tour. It's the league you want to be in. Thank you. I'm going to the LPGA. This is something that these women have worked their whole lives for, you know, and they're, a lot of them are really young and some of them are on, you know, maybe the later part of their career. But these moments when they are handed a card today, it's what they've been waiting their whole lives for. So it's so special and being able to see the emotion in the room, it's honestly indescribable. To have that moment where you know somebody's life, the trajectory of their life has changed because of that moment. I mean, that's what makes it all worth it. That's why we do this job. It's not for the money. Nobody here is working for the money. It's for the joy of seeing these athletes who are behind me celebrating and, and moments like that, um, you know, when somebody wins and, and goes from, I can't even remember what number she was, 53 or something like that, all the way to 15. Like, I don't even think she started the week thinking about the top 15. She was top thinking about top 35. That to me is an amazing story and I just, you know, I just wish we were televised so that the world could see how special this group of athletes are and the, and the storylines that happen throughout the season. Get some energy going, like something. Woo! Come on, let's go. I wanted top 10 for sure, and I did it, and I'm proud of myself, and I'm, I'm ready to, to go out there and show the world what I got. It feels like surreal. I mean, dream come true for me. Um, even coming into this week, I, as you said, I was just trying to get out of stage two. <laughs> Don't have to play stage two. Um, but you know, I, you know, with the points, and I, I knew even winning might not be enough for me to get into top 15. But it just everything lines up perfectly. So crazy. You can't come up with words to describe what it feels like to accomplish a dream of yours. 
I don't think that there's a lot of people in the world that are fortunate enough to be able to do it. I uh, don't think that they're fortunate enough to do it three or four times. <laughs> so hopefully there's not a fifth. Um, it's indescribable. There's, there's happiness, there's sadness, there's, there's all of it, you know? It's every single emotion all bundled up into one. And it's really cool to get to experience that with a lot of people. Oh, that would be so good. Thank you. Have you met my girlfriend? Mrs. Alyssa, this is Riley. We all love to follow athletes that we know, and we know their stories, and we know how hard they've worked. I mean, that's the beauty of sports. You know, it builds leaders, it builds communities, and all of us want to follow and cheer for people that we know. So when I get to know them and you hear their special stories and you see how hard they've worked and how much struggle there is, it just motivates you to say, how can we provide an environment where they can reach their peak performance? That's really what our job is, and it just reinvigorates and re-motivates us to continue to try to do that on the Epson Tour and understand what our goals are and how we accomplish that and for the LPGA Tour. And Uncle John, it's all to him. Thank he would have been so proud. I dedicated the rest of the season to him. Thank you. My Uncle John passed away in uh, Pendleton. <laughs> I know he's looking down and my aunt is here. And... I'm just really grateful to have had that relationship with him and I definitely felt his presence and I just knew I was playing for a greater purpose. So my whole family means the world to me. No, 13, 14, 15, 13. 13. Yeah. No one really sees, I mean, minimal blood, but a lot of sweat and tears that we go through as professional athletes, except the people closest to you. You know, they don't, most people get to see the highs and the highlights on social media. They don't see the lows. We tend to not post those, but your family, your friends, they kind of see you as you swivel around rock bottom, as you miss cuts, as you, as you keep putting doubt in your own dream. You know, there's people that are around you that continue to see it. And I'm fortunate enough that two of them are here to remind me that the best is yet to come. We got one more year. We know where we're playing. You know, there's a lot to be thankful for. So cheers to another year. Don't you dare shake my hand. <laughs> Absolutely. This class is very special. I think those 15 athletes have a really good chance of staying out there and making a mark on the LPGA Tour. And I know, I know there is at least a major winner or two in this class, and there might even be the next number one player in the world. What do you think this does for me in the airport tomorrow? Because I'm walking around with it all day. That is going to be one of my personal items.